Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Is that on? Great. My name is Thierry Casuto, and I'm the producer and the co-creator of Zan News. And uh, I'm Zapiro, and the other creator. What I will say is also, first of all, thank you very much to Design in Darba for having us here. But secondly, what an amazing privilege to share the stage with those two geniuses, Adrian and Basil, who have been behind pretty much almost everything that's been done in South African puppetry. And they are the great puppet masters who, in fact, have trained most of the people who we've worked with. And in fact, at one point, if it hadn't been for how long this stuff has taken us to, to do, um, they were even going to work with us, which would have been something, something, um, something really special. As I say, luckily we have, we have a number of people who've been mentored by them, and that's why we've managed to do everything, anything at all. I'll tell you that what we do is, is not nearly as complex as what they do, but we do need a huge team because what we have is puppets that are controlled by two manipulators. In fact, initially it was three, um, but we have two manipulators and we have another one for, sometimes another one for, for the eyes. So each puppet that we, we do is, has, has, has these uh, up to three people. And we, what we do is we actually, I, mean, I do the drawings and then uh, we have to actually make a little, a, a little plasticine maquette based on my drawings, which is then taken, uh, I, I then come and sort of tell the, the, the whoever's making it, no, not like that, like this, and uh, <laughs> it's a long process of back and forth till we actually have a 3D thing that works. After that, um, we, we sort of blow it up mechanically. We use a, a kind of a grid system and blow it up we blow up uh, pictures of it, you know, take pictures of, from all angles and then make another plasticine thing which is just a bit bigger than life size. And then I again come and work with the, with the puppet make, with, the, with the, the puppet sculptor and refine the features and try and really make it feel right. Of course, bearing in mind that it's got to have eyes that open and uh, it's got to move. And what it's going to be, what the next stage is to cast it in fiberglass. So we have another set of people who are able to do that, cast it in fiberglass, and from that you, you put a, a, a special formula of latex rubber, which was developed in, in France. Okay. And uh, we, we, we make a latex puppet out of that, and then, of course, that's got to be painted, wigs put on. So it's a, it's a phenomenal process, and mm -hmm. uh, it takes about as long as this is taking to... <laughs> no, that's all right. For a moment here, I thought yeah. we were on SABC. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we seem to have that technical, uh, <laughs> we, we've had sort of technical difficulties for um, 11 years, so this is, this is a minor blip, it's not, not, not particularly major by comparison. Are we there? Yes. Okay. I think we are. Okay, so I am Thierry, he's Jonathan, yeah, we Shapiro, know that by now. and this is okay. the news. Hit it. <laughs> if we love together the bad guys will have nowhere to hide. So, as my old friend Frankie used to say, start spreading the news. Mm -hmm, we are laughing today. Ba -bum -bum -bum, da -dum 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 -bum -bum. Give me that song. One more time. Me that song. One more 
Mira eso. One more time. Mira eso. One more time. And now be quiet, Desmond. It's time for the news. <laughs> So that is Zan News. Zan News is a show that was initially meant for television, for South African television, and that never made it to television, but ended up on the web. And on the web, it found a core audience, a place, and a new life. Um, we're very proud to today present our second season of Zan News after three months online. We've launched this week online again. And uh, we'll have also a very special announcement later on, as well as some surprise guests at the end of our presentation. Um, we'd like to take you back into our story. How did it all start? Very quickly, because it's about 11 years, so we'll just make it, uh, uh, we'll whiz through time. So we flash back to many, many years ago. And many, many years ago, There was a show in the UK called Spinning Image. Back then, I was a television executive in France, and I had bought the series, which, which, which we aired late night on Channel 6. A couple of guys came to me and said, why don't we do the same thing, but instead of doing a weekly comedy show, why don't we do a daily spoof newscast with latex puppets? I love the idea. I tried to do it. We didn't have enough money. We were a young channel. These two guys, one was a puppet maker, the other one was a caricaturist, took their idea to another channel called Canal Plus, which is the equivalent to Mnet, that was also born about 20-odd years ago. That show is still on. It's called Les Guignols de l'Info, and it's extremely successful. It's every night at 8 o'clock, and it's become a cult show. Let's move a few years to 1998, when I moved to South Africa with my family. We decided to relocate to Cape Town. We looked at the landscape, but we, I looked at the political landscape, and I thought, wow, there is a lot of material down here. <laughs> Boy. A lot of material back in 1998, and I think there is still even more, actually, today. So. I thought, where do we start? I'd love, I missed the opportunity a few years ago. I'd like to do this in South Africa. I think the country's ready. Um, what I did find out, though, is that there was plenty of satire in newspapers. I was, I was a huge fan of Madame and Eve and a huge fan of Zapiro. And I read the cartoons every day in the press, obviously, but watching television, there was nothing like it. So it was very challenging because when I talked to broadcasters, There was nothing at all as edgy as a spinning image or the Guignol de l'Info. So I picked up a phone book and I looked for his appear's name, which I couldn't find, obviously. And someone told me his name was Jonathan Shapiro. And he was listed. I don't know if he still is listed, but he was listed back then. And I called him, we got together, and I wasn't surprised Jonathan knew spinning image very well. <laughs> we meet up and we decide to give it a go. <laughs> the next how do we take it from, ca from cartooning, from drawings, how do we ca take it to puppets? Yeah, this is, this is the kind of thing that was, I was doing at the time. Uh, 
Well, you'll notice that that, that one with Madiba and the Queen, uh, Jacob Zubin is about to go to uh, Britain, which uh, cue next cartoon. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, then are we here? And. Uh, <laughs> So, as, as Terry said, I was a huge fan of Spitting Image. I didn't really know much about the guineals, but it didn't take much for me to, I mean, I leapt at the opportunity. I had, in fact, been to the Spitting Image studio when I was much younger, uh, very wide-eyed, and, and I, I still am wide-eyed to think of what they were doing there. Back in, in 1988, I had been to the studios in London, and it, I absolutely loved it. So, I started thinking about how I could translate my my cartoons into into these kind of puppets and you know I began working a drawing of course the very first puppet had to be Madiba uh, we actually only were able to do one puppet that was all uh, we had didn't have resources we didn't have we didn't have money but we we did the one puppet and we we really managed to make this puppet happen and work uh, and it was a lot of there, there was a lot of interest from uh, we, we made a little promo pilot using this one puppet. There's a lot of interest from SABC and ETV. And uh, I even got a chance to present the puppet to Madiba. Mango, where are you? Winner, come back. All is forgiven. Tabo! Dr. Kumalo. Ben, where are you? Shows. Fish. Hanses, baby, baby Jack, Jack. but the world is everybody. Baby of South Africa. This poor lone puppet of Madiba, in the in this little pilot that we made, a little promo piece, was looking for all for the rest of the cast, the, the whole of South Africa, looking for the other puppets, looking for the other people, and that was his, that was the essence of what we what we did with this one puppet. We just played with it. As I said, a lot of interest, and then uh, we were sort of hanging on, waiting to see whether it would go anywhere. And when I actually, as I mentioned, got the chance to present the puppet to Madiba, what happened was that I got invited to the, the, the little, to Madiba's last speech in Parliament, the last speech he made as president. That's how far back this goes. This is 1999 now, and. I went to this garden party afterwards, and I managed to smuggle the puppet <laughs> into, into the, into the uh, grounds of Fernwood Estate, and um, I got it through the metal detectors, and it sort of went sliding in through the metal detectors. And then I got uh, Frenage and Wallace's permission to actually present it to Madiba, but of course it wasn't so easy. It was surrounded by bodyguards, and the bodyguards weren't too chuffed by this idea. So Madiba was unprepared for it. I walked up. And uh, I stuck the puppet's hand out, and uh, Madiba said, uh, Oh, I believe I have met this gentleman before. <laughs> <laughs> so we were very excited. We really thought, we thought we actually had a done deal with, with the SABC, but uh, we were probably, I mean, uh, obviously very naive at that time. And uh, surprise, surprise, it fell through. Um, Perhaps, I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that I, I, around the same time I was doing some pretty nasty cartoons about some of the SABC people. Uh, this is after Max Dupree got fired. Uh, uh, no, we know, <laughs> no, Max never did this. Now, do you want the job or not? Obviously, there was a lot of bootlicking to be done. And these were the three kind of honchos at the SABC at the time. Uh, you know, some of whom we were, in fact, Phil Malefi we were dealing with. Uh, we didn't want the job that much. <laughs> we, we didn't want it, maybe not that much <laughs> to do what they did, but we, wanted, we really wanted to, get, to make this happen. And uh, this was the first time we heard this mantra. <laughs> South Africans aren't ready for this. And uh, we, believe me, we were to hear this again. Uh, it's... South Africans aren't ready for this, that, yeah, that's, that, that's the general sense that we got from it. And I mean, we, we specifically heard somebody say that, one of their big execs. So fast forward to 2005. And uh, out of the blue, I get a phone call, you know, years and years have passed. Nothing has happened. I suddenly get a phone call for in, within a couple of weeks of each other from both SABC and ETV. So somebody somewhere knew something, or maybe they all have spies somewhere, I don't know what, but now they were really interested. They wanted to, they wanted to make this thing happen. Fast forward 
Oh, yeah, actually, uh, it was a, pretty much a miracle from the SABC's point of view. A small, courageous group within SABC backed us to the hilt, and they went to their high-ups and honchos and persuaded them to put up a million bucks for a, for a pilot. Um, we wanted to, we, suddenly we had the chance to make a pilot with the idea of making a, a series, a weekly, a weekly program, and uh, we were suddenly, we were, we were on cue to, to start rolling again. Fast forward to 2008. So three years, that's how long it took to get through the paperwork at the SABC. 2008, we get the deal signed. We can produce a pilot at last. And it's only because of the perseverance and stubbornness of, of this man, because, uh, I mean, he, he, is, <clears throat> he was basically putting his whole life's work on hold uh, to, well, he was doing some other things, but he really, he really had to push and push and push. And so we finally get into a studio. We assemble a wonderful team of people. We produce our first puppets. Um, it was initially presented by uh, SABC anchor. We made a puppet of Mahendra Raghunath. We made puppets of the leading politicians back then. And we did a spoof newscast, a half-hour spoof newscast. And within that newscast, we put some, um, uh, some parodies of commercials, films, and famous TV shows. And now, put your hands together for the one and only, the Divine. First, I was afraid. I was petrified. Kept thinking I could never live with you by my side. But then I spent so many nights thinking of how you did me wrong and grew strong. And I learned how to get along. And so you are back from outer space. I just walked in to find you here. With that sad look upon your face, I should have changed that stupid lock. I should have made you leave your key. If I had known for just one second, you'd be back to both. Let me go on now, go walk out the door. Just turn around now, cause you are not welcome anymore. Weren't you the one who tried to hurt me with goodbye? Did you think I'll crumble? Did you think I'll lay down and die? Oh no, not I. I will survive. Oh, as long as I live, I know how to love. I know I'll stay alive. I've got all my life to live. And I've got all my love to give. I will survive. I will survive. I will survive. Hey, hey, believe you me. I will survive and so on and stuff like that. I will survive and so on. I will survive and so on and so on and stuff like that. So the pilot was, was very well received by, by most people who saw it, uh, but the SABC sat on it and, uh, and basically uh, didn't want anybody to see it. And after many months, um, somehow, uh, <laughs> some of it leaked onto the internet, I can't say exactly how, but uh, <laughs> then we got rave responses on, on the internet, and, and most people most people thought that there was a program that was about to happen, um, uh, including the media. And uh, we were the ones who knew that the SABC was stonewalling. And uh, then one day, the media got wind of it, and that was, uh, suddenly they were, we were making headlines. Um, it's, it's, it's a little deceptive, it, it's called the With a show that show. never existed, it was never on the air. Show that never existed, show that's never on the air, and it's also been called the Zapiro Show. Where you already know what a huge team it is, but um, I suppose part of it is uh, that at the, at the time I was having a very public fight with the man who is now our president, and, and, and he had already sued me for 15 million rand at that point. There's a, there's a second lawsuit that came later. But, and of course he wasn't happy about the shower on the head, and there were a lot of people at SABC who were very worried that, that this shower was a huge problem. They, 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 they were desperately scared to have this shower shown anywhere, anyhow, and they were sure that we were going to have it on in every scene, which is not, not necessarily the case. Um, Special assignments? Yeah. 
Okay, so then, and then stage next is that special assignment, which is an SABC program, then decided, uh, another little group of courageous people there at SABC decided to produce a show, uh, to one of their episodes on South African satire. Of course, that means a look across at satire of all kinds, but they were looking a lot at my cartoons and they were looking a lot at, at the news. And uh, then the weird thing happened is that they, they advertised the show and at the last minute, the SABC itself pulled the plug and the SABC said they were going to sue special assignment. The SABC lawyers said that they would sue special assignment, which is an SABC program, <laughs> for running clips of our show, which was a show commissioned by the SABC. And that is South African politics for you in a nutshell. <laughs> Certainly SABC politics. <clears throat> and then once again, we heard the mantra. And... Uh, our people aren't ready for this. And, sorry, that was meant, okay, I'll just tell you that that was said by none <laughs> other than the, the, Here we go. the head honcho of, of SABC at the time, uh, Dalian Porfu, and he's, I mean, I can quote him, he actually said that. And uh, so now we, you know, we were stuck again. And what, what could we do? I mean, should we give up at this point? Uh, Thierry had another idea. We would take our two star puppets, Helen Zillen, Jacob Zuma, and Little Adventure, to Johannesburg, where the uh, Save Our SABC Coalition had staged a march. Um, all the independent producers were marching against the SABC and asking for invoices to be paid. And I think uh, you all heard about this episode. Um, and they asked us if we could bring the puppets along, and I said, yes, wonderful, but who's going to pay for the trips? Who's going to take them on board and carry them because they're big, they've got puppeteers, they've got, you know, they don't travel alone, they've got quite an entourage. They actually have, so, to have to have seats and everything. Yeah, absolutely, they need to have seats. So we called up uh, an airline, and that airline was Kulula, and we asked them, would you give us seats to fly to Joburg and take the president or the future president and the leader of the opposition? See. And right. we took them through security. They got frisked. They got searched. <laughs> they sat on the plane with, um, and they were incognito, as you can see. And um, Helen Zeller was very, very busy reading the news as usual and had breakfast. Then they went on the march. They toy toy. They carried placards. We made the news. And of course, um, uh, Jacob had a little nap, a little snooze on the way back. It was a, a very full day. So that, were, that was their excellent adventure, and that was actually the turning point. That was a, a historical day, because from that day onwards, we managed to secure funding for a show that was not going to be on television, but starting on the internet, because that was, you know, 10 years ago, there was no internet in South Africa. There still isn't, of course. But um, we, we managed to get on. And one more time, we made the front pages. Not only the Mail and Guardian, but all of the newspapers that day had pictures of Helen and Jacob um, marching. And now, not only was government kind of uh, not happy with us, but the producers were very unhappy because they felt we had hijacked their march. You know, it's like inviting Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie to Cannes. And they wake up, wake, wake up, they walk up the stairs, they get all the pictures, the flashes, but that wasn't intentional. I mean, that, that that's the, the, what happens with these kind of puppets is they have, they have an incredible life in them. I mean, I had seen that from the day that I went and, and did that little uh, spiel with, with Madiba. I mean, it, it, was, it was amazing. The parliam parliamentarians were fawning over the puppet as if it was a real person. And it, it, really, it really is incredible. They, had, they, they, they kind of come to life. And so we didn't intend to hijack anything. So you see that it was the Mail and Guardian, and the Mail and Guardian happened to be our online publishing partner when we launched online uh, a few months after this. Um, why did we, how did we manage to launch online? Well, it's through the support of the fans. We had created a fan page on Facebook about a year ago, and today it has over 20,000 fans. It's one of the largest fan pages in, in South Africa, I believe. And via the internet, via social media, via Twitter, 
um, we knew we had a core audience. We knew we had um, evangelists. We had people who were ready to uh, get onto the internet and talk to their friends about it. And um, we put it together. We managed to get the guys at Melengar and Kulula together with a very, very tiny budget. I mean, really. But we did produce some wonderful puppets. And finally, in October, we launched online here in Cape Town for our season one. And now we took a hiatus, we took a break to do new puppets, to think about the new season of what we could do to improve the show. And 2010, we're launching season two with lots of surprises, um, a lot of improvements, a lot new life, a lot of, of new life on our show. First, obviously, it's new content. Season two will have a lot of new characters. Bafana Bafana coach, Carlos Alberto Pereira. We even have Eugene Terblanche. We dug him out of some hole, and he's, he's here with us now for season two. We have a new website as well, a brand new website. Um, that's available on zanews.co.za. And we are announcing today that we'll be soon on mobile. That's you know, we, 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 we found some partners, a guy who do the MTV uh, Moby sites, the Nickelodeon Moby sites, who looked at our stuff, I thought it was wonderful, and they offered to make an iPhone app and all kinds of apps for uh, mobile phones for South Africa, which would be a first, I believe, and we don't know much about it, but it will launch in a couple of weeks, and it should be exciting. Um, and the last one is, well, we're going to television as of this week. <clears throat> Finally. Finally. And can I say that something that has concerned us along the way is that countries like Brazil and India, you know, forget Britain and France and some of the other places where they've tried this sort of format, but Brazil, India, and more recently Kenya, who have kind of came to us to ask us whether we could give them a recommendation. How ironic is that? Uh, and we, we gave them a recommendation, and they, they've, they've managed to launch. Those, those three countries have this show running on television. So here we've finally got an, op an opportunity to come in using the material that we've created for the Internet. So I don't know if you guys watch Summit. It's not an entertainment channel. If you like listening to financial reports and CEOs <laughs> talking numbers, well, that's the channel to be. But for five minutes every day, there will be a different, some different kind of news there. Um, the brave people at Avusa and Summit are coming on board, and uh, we'll be there on TV from this coming Tuesday, every evening with a repeat the next morning. Um, what's, what is the show going to look like? Well, we're going to play you a few clips as a taster of the season to come. And then will be the time for a Q&A, and we have a couple of people waking, waiting backstage to join us for the Q&A. Bring the lights down, please. Hello, how's it? I'm Tim Modisa, and you are watching ZA News, because here you can. It was trumpeted as a remarkable public apology by a public figure. But Tiger Woods' television apology has drawn a mixed response from sporting communities around the world. I hear it, you know, this is bloody silly poopo, but he's got more cherries jumping out of the bloody cubby holes than a Zuma thing. What do we check? He just here, oh, it looks like a bloody dwarf in a job interview. Now at least all you are still got a cut video and doing the snoofies of the book is what's it. Now that was worth checking out a few times. The popular SABC news reader and dear colleague Mahindra Raghunath has been suspended by TV news head Amrit Manga following suspicions that he had been speaking to other media about problems within the organization. Mm. Mahindra, can this be true? <laughs>
To Hollywood, where excitement is mounting ahead of the 82nd Academy Awards. South Africa has a strong presence in the Oscar race with films such as District 9 and Invictus. We are joined now live from Los Angeles by our own Charlize Theron. Miss Theron, it is an honor to have you on the show, sister. Hello, Tim, and, and Molo, South Africa. How's it, Sunny Bunny? Ah, Sunny Bunny. <laughs> Is that how they say it out all there in Benoni or the East Rand? No, Tim. <laughs> Brentwood, East LA. Oh, I see. And it's not Tehran, but Theron, as in Theron the Shelf is my Oscar. <laughs> and don't forget it. <laughs> oh, no, we won't forget. Uh, I'm afraid we're out of time there, but uh, we'll catch up later. Miss Theron, why are we doing this? Because here we can, from all of us, is hamburger. <laughs> Goodbye and Futek. So, Mr. President, you have a sex addiction. That's what people have told me. Of course, look, there is a school of thought that argues that there is no such thing. Really? That is a school for me then? So this school of thought, they argue that the addiction is not to sex, but instead is a problem that may be rooted in the abuse of power. Now, what do you think of that? How? This school is wrong. Hmm? Why this is that school so? is wrong. You see, I'm not Tabo Mbeki. It is he who was the dictator. Besides, if anyone is getting the abuse here, it is me. These women and their demands. Hey, I tell you, sometimes it is I who feel like a schoolboy. <laughs> By the way, miss, uh, what are you doing tomorrow night? Uh, hold that thought right there, sir. <laughs> Till next time. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> and we have one last clip to show, which is a departure of what we've done before. You'll notice a detail which is new to season two. Um, it's, it's a viral video. We've sent it out via emails. It's on the web already. It's via YouTube. It's, I think it's spreading. And it is uh, 50 Cent and Neo, uh, a.k.a. Jacob Zuma and Julius Malema. <laughs> Have a baby by me. Pump it up. Have a baby, have a baby by me, baby, be a zuma, eh. Have a baby by me, baby, be a zuma, eh. Have a baby by me, baby, be a zuma, eh. Be a zuma, eh. Be a zuma, eh. Have a baby by me, baby, be a zuma, eh. Have a baby by me, baby, be a zuma, eh. Have a baby by me, baby, be a zuma, eh. Be a zuma, eh. You don't have no shame. You don't have no shame. You don't have no shame. So you don't take no blame. Hey, it's what I mean. See what I mean. Hey. So the mama's turn him on Showers when he's done And see what I mean See what I mean See what I mean Do you know who I am? Back you can have And see what I mean What's going on? I am not finished Do you know who I am? Do you know what I can do? ANC what I mean, see what I mean, ANC what I mean, see what I mean, see what I mean. As, as we mentioned, there is an enormous group of people. I mean, at last count, it, it was about 35, it's now pushing 40, of people who are currently involved in the making of of this kind of show, of this particular show. And that doesn't even count all the people who've been involved over the past 11 years. So these are, these are you know, there's huge credit we'd like to give to To the writers, writers puppet Tom makers, Eden has joined, the crew, has joined the crew recently, uh, Andrew Donaldson, George Van Der Riet, uh, Rob Carla, who did the first puppets, Lisa Redek, and the entire team. We have to say also that we are blessed with some incredible talent as uh, our voice artists, 
with Agri Lonake, who does most of the voices that you hear, including Jacob Zuma, Tabo Mbeki, Madiba, etc. He's one of the most talented voice artists in this country, and he's with us. And, <laughs> and then, of course, <clears throat> the great Nick Rabinovitz, who does a whole series of, I mean, he brings another thing other than just voice. Uh, Nick is uh, Desmond Tutu, he is uh, Peter de Villiers, he is a number of other voices, and he's got, of course, such flair that he, he can add a whole lot to what's already been written. And, and Nikki Jackman, also and, known as Helen, and uh, she does a wonderful Helen, she does Charlize, she does all the female voices, she's also quite a chameleon. Um, so that is the news on the web, as always, soon on mobile, and from next week on TV. So that's the end of our presentation. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the one thing we know how to do as South Africans is laugh at ourselves. So thank you so much for bringing comic relief into our lives. We desperately need it. Um, we're going to open the floor up to some questions. I, I hope most of you have got some interesting questions to ask. And through to, uh, thanks to the wonders of television, we're going to have these questions answered by two of South Africa's most loved icons. Ladies and gentlemen, former President Nelson Mandela and Bishop Desmond Tutu. I wish they couldn't be here. They couldn't be here live with us, and uh, we, we were very lucky that uh, we managed to get a live feed. So, uh, here they are. Honorable guests, we are so um, honored to have you here with us. I'd like to ask any members of the audience, if you have any questions, please walk up to hello, the mics hello. and ask them. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello, Archbishop. Yes. Uh, Wonderful to be here at this uh, design in Daba. Tata, uh, whose in Daba is it anyway? Uh, I, I thought it is yours, Arch. It is definitely yours. It's your in Daba. Okay. <coughs> well, I must say, in Kenshani, I enjoyed this handspring uh, guy's handspring, but I don't really get this whole puppet thing. Anyway, I, I also Tata, uh, managed uh, to listen to this Martha Stewart but uh, some people said that she bored the pants off them. Uh, <laughs> you, of all the people, Arch, should actually not be uh, talking about her pants. Uh, you never wear them anyway. Uh, that is not true. In fact, I do sometimes, like in uh, Christmas 1972, I wore pants at least twice. Never seen you in pants, Arch. Always wearing dresses. Oh, stop pulling my leg, man. You could do with a bit of a leg pulling. Why? <laughs> well, uh, aren't you about uh, three foot two? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Listen, did you know that uh, Martha Stewart also had a long walk to freedom? <laughs> oh, really? Is that so? Did she also work uh, at uh, the lime quarry? No, in fact, she just made lime cordials. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing. By the way, uh, did you know they invited Julius Malema to speak here? How could uh, they do that? He got a double G for woodwork. <laughs> My goodness. Yes, a double G for woodwork. Uh, he's never going to make the cabinet at that rate. Kenzani, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> are there any questions, my darling? Kenzani, uh, any questions, uh, my daughter? Any questions? Do we have any questions from the audience? Come on. Sorry, I'm not sure they knew they were live. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. We Anyone? Nobody? Come on. Any questions? You're telling me you don't want to ask two of the most important men in South Africa a question? <clears throat> Thank you. There's a mic right <laughs> there. Um, could you tell us uh, what In the mic, otherwise they won't um, hear you. Opinion on polygamy is, gentlemen. <laughs> 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 Well, uh, Tata, uh, how many wives did you have? Well, uh, <laughs> if, if we go back in the Old Testament, or, uh, Testament, 
All men of God had more than one wife. Yes, very good answer. Uh, listen, my dear, I don't think uh, we should make any jokes about uh, uh, President Zuma because, uh, as it says in the Old Testament, uh, Moses was also once a basket case. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the arch. Uh, thank you. Any other question? I think. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, 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 any uh, more questions okay. from our audience? I think uh, we've got one more question. Um, I want to ask the bishop. Apparently, you were very unhappy with the fact that the Dalai Lama wasn't allowed to come and visit on our shores. Oh yes, my darling, and I like that pink shirt you are wearing. <laughs> but I have not seen you in church for such a long time. <laughs> now, hopefully, she, hopefully she will show up this Sunday. <laughs> I I must say to answer the question that. Uh, I felt sad and hurt uh, about the Dalai Lama. In fact, I was very upset with the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, which has nothing to do with Jacob's love interests <laughs> overseas. But I was very upset when they said that the Dalai Lama, that these lamas are dangerous and can spit you in the face. They always refuse a good people with visas. <clears throat> vis a vis. Uh, the visa. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I Ladies, think, uh, I think that's that's all they have time thank for. Thank you, good people. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye, bye bye, guys. <laughs> Gentlemen, you make us absolutely proud to be South African. And thank you for the wonderful work that you do. And thank you for joining us one more year. We hope to see you again next year and keep up the good work. Thank you. Well, of course, thank you. <laughs>